But why did it, that brought it down about 40%, and then since then it's come down about another 40% altogether. Uh, suicide attacks in Iraq are down over 85% since, uh, since the peak. What happened in 2008? November 08, that's when we signed the withdrawal accords with the Iraqi government. Since then, we have withdrawn over 100,000 ground forces from Iraq. And what's happened? Do we have a, an, an emboldened uh, terrorist group uh, that's building a second caliphate on the Arabian Peninsula? No. We're putting the terrorists out of business. Terribly important to see that that fear that we'd embolden the terrorists is not coming to be uh, the case. In fact, the opposite is the case. We're cutting the fuse. We're deactivating the terrorism. What about Afghanistan? Afghanistan is a prime example of the strategic logic I'm putting forward. Uh, it, before we toppled the Taliban in fall 2001, Afghanistan never saw a suicide attack in its history. Since then, for the first few years, the number is very small. And then, in 2006, suddenly it explodes, and it stays high even through the Obama surge. Even in the Obama surge has not brought the number of suicide attacks down to any meaningful degree. In fact, many of them are more deadly than before. What happened? What happened in 2006 to change Afghanistan from the good war to the bad war? Well, first, let's look at the targets of the suicide attack. The green are US and NATO troops. 83% of all the targets in Afghanistan are US and NATO troops. But why suddenly do we have a huge number of suicide attacks against US and NATO troops in 2006 and continuing? Well, let's look at who's doing the suicide attacks. We can identify and corroborate the identities of 93 of the Afghan suicide attackers. We think that's a large number because last April, Army Intelligence in Kabul uh, contacted us saying they had about 50 in their secret database. What did we have? Well, we gave them our information. They don't give us their secret information, but they did say the patterns were comparable. So what are the patterns? 90% are Afghan nationals. And not any old Afghan nationals, Pashtuns. No Uzbeks, no Tajiks. 5% are nationals from countries that border Afghanistan, and only 5% are coming from outside the zone of conflict. This is not some global jihad swirling around the world. This is regional opposition to American and Western military presence. But again, 2006, what happened to suddenly make large numbers of Pashtuns do suicide attacks against US and NATO troops? Well, it has something to do with forces, but it's not simply the number. This shows you the escalation curve of our troop levels in Afghanistan from the beginning. And as you can see on the end, the Obama surge, nothing new. We've been surging over 20,000 troops in Afghanistan now each, of each year for several years. There's nothing special about the Obama surge. It's just the latest surge. The key thing that you need to know about this, in the first couple years, 01, 02, 03, we not only had a small number of troops in Afghanistan, they were only in the capital city, Kabul. They were serving as Karzai's personal bodyguard. We were petrified that Karzai was going to be assassinated, and we focused on defending him. Then, in November 2003, the UN gave us a mandate to spread our forces around the rest of the country to actually occupy Afghanistan. And ISAF, that's the name of the military organization there, uh, put together a plan, and this is the actual map of ISAF's plan to occupy Afghanistan. Stage one, go north, our friends, the Northern Alliance. Stage two, go west, more friends. Then, in 2005, early 2006, where do we go? The Badlands, the Pashtun homeland. That's when Pashtun su suicide terrorism explodes against the army that is now sitting directly on top of it. 
That's what's causing posh to, that's what's causing suicide terrorism, and that's why putting in 30,000 more troops is not really bringing it down. What about Pakistan? What's the country that borders just on the other side? Pakistan. And who lives on the other side of the border here? Pashtuns. It's the other half of the Pashtun homeland. And if I showed you the curve for suicide terrorism, we have a whole chapter on Pakistan in the book, you will see that it, it looks very similar to Afghanistan with a six-month lag. It spikes up, it goes through a tiny number of attacks until 2007 when it explodes, it actually starts in late 06, but it explodes up and stays high. But why? Why the spike up there? Well, while we are directly occupying this half of the Pashtun homeland in the first part of 2006, we start to put pressure on Musharraf to pick up 100,000 Pakistani army troops that were defending the country in the east against who's the number one threat to Pakistan? India. India. And remember, there was that near nuclear war between India and Pakistan in 2002. See, we like to say the number one threat to Pakistan ought to be Al Qaeda or the Taliban. But remember, in that nuclear exchange, we started to model 30,000 dead Pakistanis in just a few few days. This is a, a third, not third, excuse me, 30 million, <laughs> much bigger numbers. Nuclear problem, as much as we think terrorism is a problem, nuclear conflict with India would be much, much worse. And what we did is we put pressure on Mushara to pick up 100,000 Pakistani army troops, move them from defending the country against the number one threat, and put them on the Pashtun homeland, the western districts of Pakistan. That's when suicide terrorism in the country exploded. And 75%, not 100%, but 75% of all the suicide attacks in Pakistan are directly against the Pakistani army in the western districts of Pakistan. That I call indirect occupation because they're doing our bidding. Um, now, of course, we've also done drone attacks on top of that. So yes, we can add the actual military force on top of that. But that army presence doing our bidding is what mainly caused the suicide terrorism to explode. And what did it do to Musharraf? It caused his legitimacy to plummet. That's when he went from being our putative ally to our stooge, our puppet, our Karzai, who does our bidding and he lost his legitimacy in Pakistan. What did we do? We saw that happening, and who, uh, Brenazir Bhutto, she ran the country in the 1990s. She was living in London. She had been basically knocking on the door of the White House, begging to go to Pakistan with our support ever since 9-11 uh, uh, began. Well, we finally said, you have your wish. We want you to go, because we need a backup in case, car in case uh, um, 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 Mushara falls. Well, she goes in the fall of 2007, um, and she gets there, and in October, Ayman al-Zahari, bin Laden's number two, writes her a letter saying, we know you're an American agent, we know you're a backup to Mushara, get out or we will kill you. Well, she stayed, and Al-Qaeda killed her in a suicide attack two weeks later. This is also why we're having so much trouble now with the government of Pakistan in our relations here with Afghanistan. The more we militarize this problem, the more we're breaking Pakistan apart. 